Today we're talking about rumors, so take everything with a tremendous amount of salt because it might not actually happen, but Tesla Scope, who has leaked things in the past, is telling us that ever since May of 2021, Tesla's software team has been developing an app store, which got me super duper excited to hear. Sawyer Merritt was referencing it as well. He's got lots of information correct in the past, so again, because this is all internal development, because this is very software related, it's gonna be very, very hard to prove if any of this news is real until basically Tesla announces it. But the logic of Tesla launching their own app store is just too good and I think that the financial benefits of it are just so strong to leave alone and remain as an untapped market because it would make so much more sense in my opinion that Tesla has been switching all of their vehicles over to the AMD Ryzen processors alongside AMD graphics cards which are actually pretty capable and on par with the same GPUs found in PlayStation 5s. If they're willing to ship that even in the Model 3 re-reel drive, which surprised me, then it's probably because they think there's going to be a certain amount of return with including better graphics, better CPU performance, as more and more developers in the future might be able to design games, apps, services that work within Tesla's own vehicle. I've made a video about this a long, long time ago because I figured, hey, you've got like almost 3 million vehicles on the road. All of them have internet connection. All of them have screens. All of them already have streaming apps like Netflix and Twitch and Hulu. So why not just open up the floodgates so instead of Tesla having to manually secure the rights to every single game they want to add or secure certain privileges of streaming certain apps on their car, just let the third-party developers do the work for you. I mean, I'm sure they would be happy to, hey, by the way, in your Tesla, you can subscribe to this service or you could download this app and watch these videos or look at these photos and that type of thing. There's kind of like unlimited potential in regards to how many apps someone could come up with. It's kind of up to Tesla how useful they want these apps to be because one of the most common criticisms and the most common comments I was seeing all those years ago when I posted a video saying that Tesla needs an app store and I think that it would make a big difference on their vehicle was people concerned about privacy, people concerned about security, malware going on the Tesla and you know obviously it's a vehicle instead of a phone so something that you get inside of and drives you 60, 70, 80 miles an hour down the freeway you don't want that many third-party software companies having control control over what goes on the screen, but my common response to that criticism is that there are ways to ensuring your app store is super secure and very locked down, particularly with an electric vehicle, because if Tesla wants to, they can essentially require all these third-party apps to be shut down and off whenever the vehicle is in motion. We're mostly talking about how the vehicle performs when it is parked, when it is charging, when it is in your garage at home. It's very, very simple software-wise to keep digital walls within the OS to prevent anything Thing that the developers are capable of accessing, you know, you don't have to let third parties have access to your motors, have access to your brakes or your cameras or any of that stuff. Essentially, if Tesla does launch their own app store, they could secure it in a way that developers only can really control what's happening on a certain portion of the display and you can access the CPU, the GPU, and keep in mind the full self-driving computer is a completely different machine. So if you're using autopilot or if you're using FSD, that's using a completely different system than the onboard MCU, which even if the center screen crashes or the software has an issue, you know, your car still works. You can still accelerate, you can still brake, you can still turn. It's another common misconception people have with Teslas is they're like, oh no, because it's all powered by computer. If the computer crashes, that means the car has to crash too. No, they're completely redundant systems in place, including the full self-driving computer, which actually has two chips on board in case one of them crashes, there's another one to fall back on. But let's talk about revenue potential with an app store, right? Because if Tesla is able to let third-party developers bring games or bring services or just apps onto the software itself, then those developers would theoretically be able to put ads or in-app purchases within these computers, and Tesla can take a cut of that revenue stream. You know, Apple obviously has been accused of antitrust, and a lot of people are upset about the 30% revenue cut on the iOS app store, and because Tesla and Elon specifically has said numerous times they don't want to be like Apple, they don't want to be a walled garden, they don't have to take a 30% cut, maybe they just want it to be 15%, which would still be incredibly competitive, and considering Legacy Auto barely has software figured out in the first place, I think that even if the revenue cut Tesla could generate from a third-party app store is fairly small, and it's not as profitable a business as Apple or the Google Play Store, that's fair. It's a car, you know, it doesn't fit in your pocket, and there's probably a bunch of people that are just gonna use their Tesla as a regular car, and don't really see a need or a desire to spend extra money on apps 
in games because they would rather put that towards their phone because they can take that inside with them. But to me, it would actually not be so much about the App Store itself generating a ton of revenue. It would be more so about Tesla as a brand and Tesla retaining their lead as a software leader because if you had a third-party dev store, think of all of the apps you could bring to the Tesla that you absolutely would have a hard time bringing to other legacy automakers that are just kind of piggybacking off of custom Linux-based systems or Android Auto or just platforms that are not going to be easy to optimize for because Legacy Auto has all these different screens and a lot of them are still portrait and a lot of them have dials on them, which is going to make it much harder for developers to change around what they want with the software. Tesla has the largest fleet of vehicles with the largest displays, considering Model 3 and Model Y are selling at incredibly high volumes and with Giga Texas and Giga Berlin, that's only going to get higher. All of these vehicles have 15-inch screens in landscape, not to mention they're going to be fairly capable with, with AMD Ryzen CPUs and the great graphics cards they're including in these vehicles. That means if you want to bring Minecraft to the Tesla, Microsoft theoretically would be able to. Or even if you just wanted to look at some pictures or scroll through a photo library on the car, Google Photos could bring their app to Tesla OS or whatever Tesla ends up wanting to call it. And on that app store, you could scroll through photos or play any number of games that's technically already available on multiple platforms now within the car. And because of these next generation computers, they might be pretty dang good at it. You could even eventually pull the Xbox Game Pass market strategy where Tesla launches their own monthly subscription and it grants you access to a ton of games. So a lot of people justify that because they're like, eh, I'm already paying this much for insurance or I'm already paying for this much for FSD, five bucks a month or something to unlock a bunch of really, really cool games on my car. Sure, why not? I mean, we're already seeing references in Tesla's code to allowing Bluetooth support for third party controllers in the car. At the Model S Plaid event, they showcased that they were making their own custom control of some kind that would go along with the launch of, you know, cyberpunk on Tesla's vehicles. So Tesla could already start selling more accessories to people by pitching more and more games and you're just gonna get infinitely more app variety if you open it up to third-party developers because Tesla already has so much attention and so many people talking about them. Every game or every app that was suddenly available on Tesla would get a ton of attention and a ton of brand recognition from the Tesla community which is ever-growing and I I know most people are like, well, there's just not as many Teslas as there are iPhones or Android, so why even bother with this market? But I would actually beg to differ. I know that we'll probably never have as many Teslas as there are smartphones, but Tesla is still growing at an astounding rate year over year, and now all of their vehicles are including this fairly capable graphics performance. And if we're looking at a million and a half vehicles this year, within the next five years, we'll probably be closer to five million a year and then six million a year. And long term, I do think Tesla is going to stick around for decades to come, if Tesla's global fleet starts looking like 50 million, 100 million vehicles or more, then the potential of third-party App Store revenue is fairly high. I'm not saying the App Store alone is going to account for majority of their revenue. I don't think it will ever be as profitable as Apple's business, but it's not nothing. It's better than zero dollars in revenue from third-party App Stores, which is probably what most legacy auto is going to be stuck with for a long time, because they're struggling to just make their vehicles have good at range and not catch on fire or, you know, they're even struggling with the concept of over-the-air updates, which Tesla has mastered for years now. So they're not baking in custom full self-driving computers and they're not baking in AMD graphics cards that are going to be capable of playing AAA games at 60 frames a second and that kind of thing. So I just see it as not so much an App Store revenue stream, but something that would keep a bunch of people coming to Tesla. Because honestly, I could see it end up being kind of like the Android Play Store where less money is spent on it, so most of the games and apps apps on there are free with ads. With the amount of ad revenue you could generate from games that people like to play, Candy Crush or Clash of Clans or Wordle, you know, things that it's going to take way too long for Tesla to adopt all these software programs individually. But with an app store, you would get a ton of exposure and a bunch of people would suddenly be like, yeah, this Hyundai Ionic 5 is really cool, but the software is just nowhere near what Tesla is capable of doing. Or this ID4 has pretty good range for a pretty good price, but it's not going to have all these games and apps and services that I can check up on. I mean, with a third-party app store, you could put Twitter on the Tesla, right? You could just scroll through Twitter as you're on the computer. You could put a YouTube studio app on there and live stream from the in-cabin camera if you want to. The potential is kind of endless with this market, so knowing that Tesla Scope is saying they're hoping to launch this app store before Cybertruck deliveries begin means that we could theoretically see this update come by the end of 2022. It'll just depend on how things are going internally at Tesla, and I think this year would be a fantastic year 
to do it because, as we know, Tesla is chip supply constrained mostly throughout all of 2022, which means they can't introduce new models because that would result in less vehicles being delivered, which as far as mass production goes, it's just a lot of ramping up things, and that's probably just a lot of employees working on the manufacturing lines, but behind the scenes, of course, Elon and Tesla are really, really preoccupied and focused on software, making full self-driving better and improving Optimus with the Tesla bot. So if we're going to have a year where we primarily focus on software development, figuring out how that app store is going to work and how apps can be submitted and analyzed to make sure they're not scams or malware and building up that side of the business, which I do think will have a pretty decent amount of revenue potential, even if it's not most of the company's revenue, would be really exciting to see for Tesla's growth in the automotive sector. And of course, this is only going to create stronger demand because all of a sudden you're not going to have a really, really competitive, really strong app store on all of Tesla's competition. So that might be one of those features that keeps people within Tesla's ecosystem. What potential do you guys see in an app store? What third-party applications would you like to see brought to Tesla? I know a lot of people out there would love to see some options for, hey, Apple Music. You can now install that application and use that for your music streaming on the car. Maybe even third-party applications that allow for CarPlay to be baked in at the same time as Tesla's OS is existing inside it. Even cloud security camera companies could roll out apps that are on the Tesla. So now, even if you're on a trip supercharging, you just open this app and you can see right on the screen how your pets are doing or how the front yard is looking or news sites could roll out applications for news articles that you can read straight off of the car or stock tracking applications because probably a lot of people with Teslas are interested in the business sector. So you could bring Webull or Robinhood or Vanguard to the Tesla app store and have all kinds of options to look for. Email applications. If you want to check email or even respond to it directly off the Tesla, you could. Use the voice commands for dictation or just use the on-screen keyboard. There's so much you could do with an app store and I think there is a way to make it secure in private and make sure the software doesn't take advantage of anything of the car when it's in motion. But I'd love to hear all of your guys' ideas down below, so feel free to let me know if you think it's a good or bad idea. Thank you to everyone on Patreon supporting the channel, helping me afford to Tesla later this year, and everyone just watching the channel, that seriously does help out a ton too. Take care, have a great day.